Science education in South Africa is gaining momentum throughout the country and with initiatives like the Mobile Science Centre and the Sassel SciFest now in its 11th year, more and more children are becoming aware of science around them. We met up with Arvin Gupta, author of a number of science education books, to find out more about science through toys. Gupta first got involved in science education 28 years ago when he took a year's relief from his job to work on designing teaching aids for science education in an Indian village. Uh, this program was started by a very eminent scientist in India. And he went to, these, uh, to this village and found that uh, none of the schools had any science laboratory. And all the science was learned by rote. Children mugged up definitions, mugged up, mugged up formulae and came exams and just spit it out. But uh, he thought this was a very bad way of learning science, a very mutilated way of learning science. And then they gave a proposal to the government that we'd like to work in 16 schools for five years. Government schools, this is 30 years down the line. And we'll, we'll look at whatever is available in the village very critically. What are the possibilities it holds? Well, you know, the batteries may still come from the city, the magnets may come from the city, lenses may come from the city, but there are so many possibilities of doing creative science using local materials, right? And a lot of, lot of scientists in India participated in this they, because many of them were teaching MSc students, BSc students and they felt very sad that many of their students did not even understand seventh grade science and they had come to the BSc level. This was a reality, a very living reality. Over the years, Gupta has designed numerous low-cost science teaching aids which relate to everyday life and can be used to help children grasp scientific concepts such as levitation used in magnetic levitation trains. This is a levitating pencil. This is a piece of rubber slipper. And you can see these are ring magnets. And they're just the right size that they go inside a pencil very easily. Right? That's the nice thing about them. You don't have to scrape the pencil very much. So you put two magnets in the pencil. Now on the slipper, the front magnets are tracked. I can just take this out and you can just see. The front magnets are tracked. And then I just put it inside. And the rare ones, first you make them attract and then you reverse them. So it's the same poles, so they repel. So what's happening over here is that these front ones are pulling this pencil and these rear ones are pushing it. So this pencil shoots in this direction, it just lunges forward. And to stop that, you take a piece from an old CD. This is one eighth of a CD. And you put it over here, it's like a wall to prevent it. And then if you put the pencil over here, you find that the pencil is just touching the CD. It's just hanging in there. And then you can give it a twirl. It just goes on and on for a very long time. It's a very nice levitating pencil. And this is how the magnetic levitation trains work. They zip at 400 kilometers an hour because they're not touching the track. They're lifted from the track. It's a great cushion and there's very little friction. And this is the reality today. So children can get a glimpse into the magnetic levitation trains with a little toy like that. Great fun for children because over here they can change the positions of the magnets and they can get a very good feel about it. Gupta has often been referred to as a science magician with a box of tricks. Through repurposing the use of what seems like everyday junk, he creates inexpensive toys that children can play, experiment and learn with. His balloon pump is an example of this. Made with a piece of old bicycle tyre and old film containers, the pump enables children to experiment with pressure. The best thing a child can do with the toy is to break it, right? <laughs> if it's a curious child, he, would, he or she would like to dissect it, see what's, what's inside the stomach of the toy, and get to the root of it, right? Uh, until then, they would not be satisfied, right? And when the toy is made out of matchsticks and straws, breaking it or pulling it apart is the first step towards understanding science around us. Rebuilding it is part of the learning process. With his hands-on approach to science, Gupta attempts to break the stereotypes associated with scientists as men in white coats. I think it's good to get children excited about science. It should look something out of the extraordinary, you know, out of the ordinary. If you look at the levitation pencil, you know, it looks like an impossibility. You know, as if it's a, it looks like a magic trick, right? But it's very much a reality. I think uh, if you show but the one is that I find that if you are able to show children possibilities with ordinary things which they are used to in everyday life, then they think that science is not something which you do wearing a white coat with burrits and pipettes and you know, very fancy glassware and plasticware. Science is everyday affair. And they started looking at their own reality critically and seeing possibilities there. 
Otherwise, we have this very stereotypical notion that unless you go to the laboratory, you wear a white coat, you're not doing science. And there could be nothing more stupid. And these stereotypes have been propagated by vested interests. Unless you have a science kit, you are not doing science. And there could be nothing more stupid than this. Kids are doing science all the time without using these big words, right? Gupta believes that teachers should be given more autonomy in order to incorporate more creative teaching methods in their classrooms. If you get children young, right, get them excited about science, about making things, doing things, building their, seeing possibilities, then, then the sky is the limit.